the delaying is finally over. The wait is over, my friends. It is finally time. It's finally time for a legendary item tier list. But bonus meme. You guys get a bonus meme here. Before we do the legendary item tier list, we have to do this first. People always say, how do I make a legendary? How do I do it? I don't know how to do it. Please help me. I don't know how to make a legendary weapon. Well, rather than make a guide for every legendary in the game, I am actually very lazy. So I'm going to show you how to make every legendary in the game, or actually, funny enough, anything in the game, right? Very easily. Any crafting, any legendary, any collection, all of that can be done very, very easily thanks to a marvelous website called Guild Wars 2 Efficiency. So what you do is you go to Guild Wars 2 Efficiency. Dot com. There it is. You log in. You get your API key. Paste your API key in to this. Log into it. Boom. Then you go to the crafting section over here. And what do you do? Very simple. You look for what you want. Let's make Chuka and Chomba. One of my favorite legendaries and has a collection with it. We click it. There you go. I know it will actually show you every single thing like what it's all made of how all these things operate here but that's not even the best part you can go and see how much gold you need your shopping list of items to buy etc etc however that's not the good bit let me show you guys the good bit don't be intimidated by this it will actually save your progress by the way you can kind of tick things off once you purchase them which is really nice actually it can kind of tell you how much gold you you need left over, right? Which is really, really nice. Kind of handy. But scroll down through all of this. That's very scary. Look, look how complicated legendaries are. Wow. Isn't that complicated? Yes, it is. If you go over here, it will actually just give you a step-by-step -step guide on how to go about actually crafting this legendary weapon. So it will walk you through the collection steps. It will walk you through the crafting processes on um, making all the items that you're going to need to actually build everything right. And then right at the end, you scroll all the way down, do all these steps, do all these crafting things, all that, all this, blah, blah, blah. Look, it's, it's pretty heavy, as you can see. Legendary weapons? No joke, guys, in Guild Wars 2. It's serious business. You better be committed if you want to get this done. All the way down. And Ray! Step 115, we have our legendary weapon. So, yeah, good luck, okay? <laughs> have some fun with that. It's not as bad as it looks. A lot of these steps are basically trivial, right? It's just like craft some items from some very cheap material. So, it's not as bad as it sounds, but there you go. Additionally, this is really, really important. Really, really important to understand here as well. Um, for collection-based legendaries rather than crafting-based legendaries, um, you can actually use efficiency to directly tell you how to do that uh, collection. For example, if we're looking for Hunter's Journal Entry 1, we can click it and we can go Open Wiki to here. And then it will uh, immediately open the page related to this collection item on the Guild Wars 2 Wiki, which will then tell you exactly how to do it essentially over here, right? And you can see here, right? It says, how, here's how you do it. You speak to the Ronan Heart researcher, researcher Hrapper, and then interact with the nearby Brill Alliance monitors, right? So you go ahead and go here. You can click on the NPC, see where this particular NPC is on the map, and rinse and repeat that for the entire thing. Obviously, some of the stuff you can do in the game because the game will explain this to you as well, right? In the collection log within the game. But for some of the more potentially complicated collections or things that aren't as clear, this is particularly true with legendary trinkets that kind of don't give you that many clues sometimes on what you're actually supposed to do. Welcome to Guild Wars 2, by the way. Then it can actually be really useful to have this. And it can just give you this step-by-step -step thing because it can be very overwhelming. It's going to blast you with like, oh, do 20 things to make a legendary. And having something like Guild Wars 2 efficiency can really break down this crafting process into little pieces and make it seem a lot more approachable. So like I said get on efficiency. It's amazing. It's super useful. And this is only one of its many functions. But this website, it is going to change your life if you get on Guild Wars 2 efficiency. It is so useful. You can even win free stuff on the lottery. Wow. Isn't that great, guys? And just to be clear, this will work for every um, thing that you can craft, right? You could do Ascended. You can do Legendary. You can do um, like weird items, any item. It will tell you exactly how to craft it and it'll even give you steps to do so. So bear that in mind. It's also very easy to set up, right, with the API key, right? It will give you step-by-step -step instructions when you log in. It will take you to your arena net page, create an API key, come back, paste it, done. It's like you can get this set up in less than five minutes and then the power of the API will be yours to command. So that's the little brief introduction 
Okay, a little brief introduction to legendary weapons. Now let's get down to business. I am going to rate what legendary items I perceive to be the biggest value. Okay, now... Of course, this is not, we're not talking about cosmetics here. We're talking about what's going to get you the most bang for your buck. Legendaries are a big investment. And now particularly with the legendary armory, they bring a huge amount of utility to the table that will make your gameplay experience significantly better. A lot more fun, a lot easier to play the game and give you more flexibility in how you approach the game. Obviously, if there's a particular legendary that you really like the cosmetic effect of, then you obviously want to go for that first. Oh, I really want Twilight. Well, get Twilight. Oh, I really want this legendary back piece. Then get that. So that's how we're judging this. We're doing it on value alone, right? In terms of how impactful it's going to be to your gameplay. Maybe we'll also throw a little bit of how impactful is it to your visual appearance as well as a bonus meme. But one more caveat here as well, actually, before we get in, okay? Like I'm, I'm stalling within my own video here, and I actually like that. There's one super important thing to understand here as well, is a lot of legendaries, particularly the trinkets, so rings, accessories, back pieces, and even uh, also armor as well. In this case, weapons a little bit less so, but definitely armor. Uh, they will have time gates in them. So, if you can, if you've got the hours to do it, you actually really want to plan ahead when you're crafting legendaries because it's entirely possible that you're going to have to have this period of downtime during crafting one of them that you're going to need to go back. Uh, you know, Then you're going to have to go back and do something else instead. So if possible, you want to try and progress all of these things at the same time. This is particularly true of cross-game mode legendaries. For example, you can uh, be earning PvP legendary armor and World vs. World legendary armor and raid armor all at the same time so instead of doing them sequentially one after the other you can do it all in parallel and that will massively speed up the acquisition process and that absolutely goes for um trinkets especially right and back pieces the back pieces are very often highly time gated and so is the armor uh so be aware of that that's one thing to keep in your mind when you're crafting legendaries but let's get into it we're done here we go legendary crafting tier list and Going directly into the S tier, the best things that you're going to get the most value out of, okay? The most value is actually, weirdly enough, it's going to be, uh, it's going to be back piece, okay? Uh, and the reason for this is because back piece is actually kind of annoying to get, right? They're a little bit annoying to get. And these things are going to save you a lot in the long run. They also look pretty cool, which is really nice, but they have a huge amount of utility. You're going to get this passively while you're playing any game mode a lot of the time. You know, they're kind of very built into the progression systems, to be honest, um, of this. And again, getting an ascended back piece is actually quite annoying. It can be quite involved, right? And require a good amount of... Uh, funds to actually replicate these so once you have this and you have a legendary back piece on every single one of your characters it is so good and they're often quite easy to make as well definitely a bit pricey but very very good indeed kind of in a similar vein uh you're gonna see the rest of the trinkets also get up there to this s tier in my opinion right this is absolutely amazing stuff the season three stuff aurora uh vision right this is definitely s tier right they are time gated but seriously having ascended trinkets on every single one of your characters oh oh oh, oh. it's beautiful once you have all six of them oh yes 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 so good and so we have our trinkets we have our ring and we have our amulet and the the amulet in particular um i think i have to give this one a bit of a special mention here it might even be um ultra high tier because you can actually get this one for free so i'm going to try and order them as they go horizontally in terms of goodness uh and the amulet is amazing the amulet is totally free Okay, you just have to do a bunch of achievements. You don't have to spend any gold and it will also give you progression towards other legendaries because you get a bunch of free mystic coins, mystic clovers while doing the amulet. You make gold while doing it. It's totally free for doing achievements and you get achievement points and you experience the old content. I mean, come on, what's not to love, right? Get that amulet from the, this is called the return to achievements. It's basically like, I'll just show it in the, uh, show it in the game real quick here. 
you look at this, uh, is over here. Where did it go, actually? Um, it is in... Is it in side stories? Yeah, return. These ones here, return to one path ends. It basically go back to every episode in the game, do a bunch of achievements here. You get a free legendary right at the end of it. Oh, Season of the Dragons. You can see that. So it is a bit of a grind. It will take you a while, but it is a totally free legendary amulet, which is pretty damn good. And it has a cool effect thrown into it as well. Bonus. Hell yeah. It's good stuff. And now things get a little bit spicier. I'd be really tempted to actually put armor on S tier as well. I don't think it has quite the level of utility. Um, oh, I think I have to. Like, armor is arguably even better than trinkets, by the way, um, because the trinkets are cheaper to get. They're kind of annoying to get, but they aren't going to cost you as much gold as making multiple ascended sets. Although by the time you get to making legendaries, you're probably going to have loads of ascended gear anyway. Most people will, because the end game kind of showers you in, in, in ascended gear very, very frequently. But I've got to say, legendary armor is big. It's very, very good. However, the bad news is it doesn't overlap, right? You can only use like heavy armor on heavy classes. You can only use medium armor on medium and light on light. So unfortunately, I do actually have to downgrade legendary armor to A tier. It's amazing. The skins are great. And it's also really worth noting that it is very cheap as well. Okay, compared to other legendaries. For example, a, a legendary weapon or a legendary item might cost you around 2,000 gold. Okay? But a full set of legendary armor will actually be comparable in the price. So you kind of get six legendaries for the price of one to an extent. But you do have that lesson utility of not being able to use it on multiple classes. Um, however, if you only play one profession, legendary armor is god tier. It would probably even be, it would probably even be superior to the trinkets um, in some respect, because you get so much value, right? It's a very, very cheap way of getting legendary items. So keep that in mind, right? So maybe, look, I'm being mean here because I don't want to put everything in the S tier, guys. So you can mentally put this in S tier if you want, okay? It's, it's very close. It's like S tier, A tier. It's very close to S tier, guys, okay? All right. And now we're going to have to really start slamming a little bit here, guys. Yeah, tier list, but everything is S tier, right? I like that. Weapons, though. Weapons, B tier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You better believe it. Weapons, B tier. Not good. Actually. In fact, maybe it's C tier. Because runes are better. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's right. So, why is this the case? Well, legendary runes, uh, legendary weapons are one slot, and you only, you don't have to replace weapons nearly as much as you're going to have to, like, mess around with armor and trigger stuff like that. It's uh, a very big investment to make a legendary weapon, uh, and it's only one item as well. Additionally, runes are god tier utility. I'd almost be tempted to put these in A tier. The reason they're in B tier is because they're significantly worse unless you have legendary armor. If you don't have legendary armor, legendary runes are not really that good because you're going to have to extract them out every time, then put them on another piece of armor. Kind of annoying, not ideal, right? Uh, although actually that might not be the case with armor anymore. I don't think I know what I'm talking about. Runes, very high tier, but they're certainly nowhere, they're not as high value. Um, not as high value. God tier is B tier. They're all God tier, guys. They're all God tier. They're, look, it's legendary. It's legendary. It's all, You've got to imagine that even D tier here, it's not that bad. But yeah, it's not as much of a big deal because in general, you just get one rune set for your gear set, done. Bish bash bosh, easy peasy. One rune set, done. Really nice convenience, but the stat changing and having the actual physical item is going to be more of a cost save across all your characters. That is why the runes, they're outvalued by the armor. Get the armor first, then get the runes after that. That's what you want to do. Underwater weapons, D tier. Like, they're actually really cool. They look really good, but... They've got to have a low rating. I'm sorry, guys. They do. Okay, they're actually relatively low rating. Same thing with sigils. I'd put sigils in C tier as well. They're better than underwater weapons, but they are actually surprisingly low value, um, in my opinion. They're very expensive uh, to craft these things. And again, it's kind of the same story as runes. Like, you're going to 
put a set of sigils on your weapons, then kind of forget about them. Like, there, it's not that much of it. It's going to take a long time for these things to pay off compared to their price. A bit like runes, really. It's more the convenience thing there as well. Um, and again, you just set, fire, and forget a lot of the time. This is not. This is actually an F. Look, it is actually a giant F. Like, we've got the, the bonus F tier is the entire tier list. But this is how it is. And it is true that runes can be used across the like, Maybe I will promote runes to A tier. And we leave B tier empty. Or maybe we promote everything. I will allow that. And no, it's no longer an F after that. We can maybe do that. Maybe we can promote weapons like that. We can do that. We can make this kind of bizarre upside down L shape. Okay? Runes get promoted. But they're not as high value as trinkets. Right? Even though they are very nice value. And you don't get as much juice. And I think that having legendary armor is going to generate you more value than having legendary runes overall. So there it is. One really key thing that I want to reiterate before we kind of wrap this up, because look, the tier list is done. The tier list is done, guys. When you're making these things, try to do all the collections at the same time if you have the if you have the hours in the game to do that, do all the collections at the same time. Because again, you can do legendary armor in PvP while you're doing world versus world armor, while you're doing raid armor, because they all have their own time gates, right? So raids are time gated by legendary insights, basically on a weekly reset. PvP, you're time gated by PvP seasons and getting shards. World versus world, you're time gated by weekly tickets. It will take you literally 20 weeks to get enough tickets, so get to work on that right now. The same is true on stuff like the Druid Stone. There's like a you have to do a daily uh, set of hearts in an open world map called Draconis Mons to get Aurora. It'll take you like 16 days or something like that or something crazy. It's a lot of fun, very enjoyable. I'm sure you're going to have fun with that. So when you encounter one of these time gates, start working on something else. That is my guide to the legendary journey. Yeah, where's my Aquaru though? Like Aquaru would be pretty high tier. Uh, maybe like, it would be like, it'd be like C tier like, or D tier. It wouldn't be that good actually, but it would be pretty cool. It'd be a little bit cool. The reason weapons are rated a little bit lower here because you only get one item where you could basically get um, either a higher value item, like a legendary trinket, or you could get more items for the same price, which is armor. So armor um, and runes, you're going to get loads of legendary items for relatively cheap. Um, and a weapon can only be used on like not all your characters necessarily as well, where stuff like runes and the trinkets can be used on all your characters. Sigils have this type of flexibility, but most sigils aren't really that much of an investment, to be honest. Uh, so again, it's more of like a very extreme convenience. But yeah, that's it. That is my legendary item tier list. I feel like it was a little bit anticlimactic. You know, I, I was... Nike was right. There, there are no hot takes. I feel like these takes aren't hot. The only take that's hot is my take on runes, I guess. That's it. Uh, and the chat bullied me. The chat bullied me into being kind to the runes. But I would certainly, if I was going to do an order, I would probably do trinkets, armor, runes, weapons, sigils, underwater weapons. That would be my route through the ultimate endgame of Guild Wars 2.